12 Literary Arts probably exactly a year ago. <laughs> they came to my school. They were looking for new fellows to come in for the school year. Of course, I didn't read my email at that time in my <laughs> life, so I had no idea that I had been recommended or anything for the program. I came down completely unaware. There were these two people, just Daniel and Mary, just dynamic people <laughs> standing in there, just waiting to share their work with us and tell us all about the program. A diva came highly recommended from one of her teachers, Patty Markson. I remember Patty said she could really use this because she's clearly talented, but she's quiet. Adiva knew that she wanted to be involved with, with writing and with art in some way, especially with poetry, but she didn't interact a lot with the other students. She kind of kept to herself. A little bit of an introvert, I guess is how I would describe her, yeah. I couldn't understand how she could get straight A's in school without talking but now she's doing it all. You know, she's getting the A's and she's speaking up. So that's wonderful. When you step out as a leader, you take the chance that if I mess up, everybody will see those mistakes because I'm out in front of everybody at this point. So I feel like that was always my biggest drawback. So I think that's what I struggle with the most. And basically, I feel like that came from a lack of confidence, honestly. When it came time to perform, <laughs> She didn't want to get on that stage, so she kept putting it off. And he gave her chances, you know, like, okay, I'm going to let you get... No, when he finally said, okay, that's it, she did it. I was shocked. I thought she was going to crumble up there. She did a great job. I was so impressed by all the young ladies that performed, because they were all individuals. They were, none of them were anything alike. And they got up there and they spoke their truth, like, what they were about and who they were. And I thought that was awesome. That was awesome. So like, you'll never be able to stop them. They'll go, go on in life and, you know, run things. We need more women running things. Yes. It went from me being able to stay in my own corner in writing to me saying, well, I want to perform this poem. So I have to do what I need to do to be ready to perform the poem. and. So if I have to read it right now in front of everybody in this room, you got to go for it and got to keep moving because you can't get better if nobody is, I don't know how to say this, if nobody is correcting you, if nobody's giving you constructive criticism, how will you even learn from your mistakes? Her first year in the fellowship, you could just see that, like when she performed that first poem, you could see that first little bit of confidence. And so she just kept on writing and she kept on sharing. And the more that she shared, the more the interns wanted to continue working with and developing her until ultimately um, she wasn't just reading poems. She was also expressing herself in the space. After a while, she was no longer quiet. We just saw her, you know, flowering before our very eyes. And after one year, we knew that she was gonna be an intern. Her confidence has, has soared, <laughs> number one, as she, she really has found her, she's found her feet. And um, she's got a great deal of confidence. When she sees something, she speaks out. She's not hesitant to do that. Definitely grown in the Viking community here at Villa Angela St. Joe's. She has, become a voice of the senior class. One of the most important things for us is to continue to develop a diva. We see her as a, as a young person who is probably going to emerge um, as a teacher. So if she stays in Cleveland, um, as long as we can, we're going to keep her affiliated with 12 Literary Arts so that she can continue to teach, which she's very, very good at. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> I am so proud. She's awesome. She's awesome. Last year, my cousin unfortunately um, was killed. And basically, I don't know, this is dramatic, but it felt like my whole world stopped for a minute because I had dealt with death before, but it was not at a point where someone so young, 
So I did not know how to cope with that at all. And I'm, I will be the first to tell you, if it was not for 12, I probably, like, I would have probably shut down um, and grieved for much longer because 12 gave me the tools to express that grief and write it down and make it productive, basically, and make it in a way where I can use my words to tell his story, tell my story, and empower other people who lose family members in such a way. Watching her perform that poem about my nephew was very hard. She didn't tell me she had even written one, and I found it, and it tore me up. But I didn't think she was going to perform it because she like took it and hid it and everything. So when she did perform it, it was very uh, emotional. It was emotional because it's been hard. He was like the last person on the planet that should have happened to, so. It was a cool fall day when death cradled my cousin in his arms and didn't release him. Cradled him despite his crimson palms, held him when his mama couldn't, clutched onto my cousin while my cousin clutched onto life. I wonder sometimes if my cousin knew what was coming, felt the in near in the marrow of his bones in the innermost part of being, as if the black cat of doom dusted his ankles with bad omens, gray times and nightmares, a grim foreshadowing of a dead end an everlasting curse of umbrellas in the house because now it only rains inside. When you bury the young, you stand to wonder just what they had to offer. Consider the lives yet to be blessed by their presence. Doubt if God has a purpose for his mistakes. Doubt even the existence of God. It was another cool fall day. When I realized that nobody outside of my personal life knew about the life my cousin led but me. The lone lighthouse with no ships to call home. Nobody would notice this missing person without a carton of milk or an amber alert. The MIA soldier yet to return home to loving arms. Struck down instead by arms he'd never bear. It's not their fault that they missed the star while it still gave warmth, missed its expansion into brilliance before becoming a white dwarf, the shadows left by loss dwarf me until I am one too. We are one and the same. I who lay in bed at night, hear gunshots, roll over, close my eyes, unconcerned with the setting sun I bear witness to, with the family who now grieves their lost star. Death makes many a man a hypocrite, me included. It's a spring day when my cousin finds his final resting place in the depths of my soul. I nurture fond blossoms of memories, sometimes adding forget-me-nots, tending to them with heavy hearts and memorial dedications so that I may one day place them at his final resting place. I got great feedback from everyone. There was just much love to go around and I got some of that love for, just for being able, I don't know, to express myself and express what a great person you was. The future for a diva is unlimited. The sky is, I mean, she's, she's, she has made her decision as to what she wants to be, and I honestly believe she's gonna reach her goals. Unlike most of us, you know, most people in her family anyway, you know, I think she's gonna do it. I think she can, and it's because she's come out of the shell. A diva, you are an amazing young woman. I am so, excited to watch you grow and to bloom into the into the woman and the person that I know you're going to be. A diva, you have grown 
so much in such a short period of time. Continue to follow your path without fear, um, without shame. Continue unpacking the internalized depression that we've talked so much about. Continue to challenge yourself with new and different forms of poetry and writing. And continue to listen to your inner voice and you will be all that and more than any of what we can imagine.